there's a good serving of thrills with a little tad addition of pretentiousness. <laughs> Hey guys, this is my review for It Comes at Night. Apologies for being late. Work stuff and then my allergies coming back have definitely put me a little bit of a delay. However, here is my review for this film. I like it and I don't like it at the same time. Chris Duckman did a very good mo uh, video talking about sort of the critical and differentiating response to this film. And I agreed entirely with his video. This film is about a family of three, Joel Edgerton, his wife, and their son, living in a secluded area in a world where some sort of viral outbreak has happened. And they have secluded themselves, they wear gas masks, they try to prevent themselves from infection from anything. They're very good at hiding what it is. The whole idea of the film is that we know exactly what the characters know. We as the audience aren't introduced to anything that they would not know, which works to the film's advantage as well as its disadvantage. Later on in the film they kind of meet up with this family and this family comes to live with them and everything's cool at first but then things start to break down. All the while the son is having these dreams which kind of allude to the idea that he's having a little bit of PTSD from the whole everything that's going on. Not only is he kind of eyeing the wife of the guy who came over because he's 17, with 15, 17 years old, he's going through puberty. Not only is that happening to him, but then he's suffered through so much loss, he is basically realizing just how alone he is in the world with his parents, and that is starting to come into these nightmares. Now, admittedly, the nightmares are kind of spooky, but when you really think about it, they don't have much connection to the story at first. Then, how the film ends is kind of up in the air, really, for what we get as the audience is what, to what the director intended. Admittedly, there is a really good shooting. The thrills in this film, the tension is masterful. There's a part where Joel Edgerton gets into a truck and he's driving with the guy in the back going to where his family supposedly is. And that scene is really good. Because there's certain camera angles that they do that you would expect something would going to happen, and then it doesn't, but then something does. It's really good. However, because of how good the thrills are in this film for the first time, they would probably lose all effect, if not have a very, very subdued effect in the second watching. You know exactly what the characters know, which is not a lot, and that really kind of works into how the film ends, but at the same time, it really... There's some stuff that just could have been answered. Even if they didn't have to really force it in, it could have been said in a line of dialogue or something. They, there's questions only because the director wanted them. I'm not talking about the virus. I'm not talking about sort of the final climax. I'm more so figuring out how the film ends because it is up in the air for me as to what happens. Whenever they go into the dream sequences, the screen starts to get thinner. And then when it goes back to reality, it expands. Also, there's a lot of fade-outs. Fade-outs usually mean you're going into a dream. Like I said, the ending. The ending is just so up in the air. I like how it ends, but at the same time, I don't. And there is a lot of just this pretentious sort of backroom stuff you can see littered throughout the film. There's all these metaphorical meanings and stuff that the director is trying to get across. And again, I do praise him for creating a very tension-filled film. And I did enjoy aspects of the film, but oh, I just can't stand and let the pretentiousness go to the wayside and kind of be ignored because there are parts of this film that are just not in it for reasons of which I cannot fully agree with. And as I said, the ending is so just slam on the brakes that it really leaves a lot open and you more so are going to figure out more for what the director says in interviews and everything than you would for the film itself. The film doesn't leave you a bread trail. It doesn't kind of leave stuff for you to interpret like Enemy or It Follows or Sunshine. There's things that you just kind of have to they're just never going to be answered because there isn't enough information in the film to have those questions be answered in chat rooms and anything like that. So in the end, I will give It Comes at Night a 4 out of 7. It's a very good first time watch and you will like it if you don't mind the kind of the lack of answers in this film. Good idea, 
not the best executed, but still, give the guy credit where credit's due. Anyways guys, that's all for me. I hope you like this review. See you guys next time.